Hello and welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I'm going to be covering all bases from outfits to packing tips and handy items just to take with you when you long haul travel. Now of course this is all based on my own personal preferences and my own experiences so I feel like I don't have to say this but I'm going to say it anyway. I obviously don't have children so I have got no idea about all the paraphernalia you have to take with you when going on a long haul trip when you've got children. So I'm just going to put that out there, but I doubt anyone is coming to me for any tips and tricks regarding anything to do with children. And one last thing that I want to mention is that obviously lots of you regulars will already know that I do have a Disney trip coming up very, very soon. This video is not specific to any Disney trips past or present or future. Uh, this is basically just long haul travel in general. Right, so the first thing that I'm going to cover and chat about is outfits. So my go-to outfit for any long haul travel would be what I have on, which is why you don't see me filming in a tracksuit ever, but this would be my go-to for any kind of long haul plane travel, boat, long haul boat travel, is that a thing? I suppose that's just a cruise, which technically isn't the same thing, but plane travel primarily, this is what I'm going to be wearing. The reason for that is comfort. I just get very irritable if I am not comfortable and so therefore for anyone in the party I am travelling with they're going to be thankful that I'm comfortable otherwise they will feel my wrath and I'll start to get a little bit snappy if something is niggling at me. So when it comes to tracksuits I have a few different options here. I will use the description box down below the video. You might need to click on a little arrow or a little triangle just to expand it all so you can see it. Um, and I will link down there some of my current favourites at varying price points. Uh, the one that I have on and this one here, this is the same. These are both men's tracksuits. They are high streets, so they're very affordable. They're a little bit thicker than the H&M ones that I normally buy. So these are my travel tracksuits or slightly more sort of winter tracksuits. And of course, when it comes to travel outfits for long haul travel, there's some sort of things to bear in mind, your destination where you're going, if you're a hot or cold person, all that kind of stuff. But for me, I am primarily a cold person. So airports, air conditioning, planes, to me, cold. So I will always need some sort of warmth. So therefore a fleecy line tracksuit is the absolute winner for me for comfort and also for cozy vibes, keeping me warm. Now there is zero judgment from me if you are someone that likes to dress up when you travel, even if you're just sat on the plane. No judgment from me whatsoever, but my personal opinion is it's not a fashion show and so therefore I'm just not fussed about being in perhaps a more styled outfit. I'm quite happy just being in my tracksuit. I need an elasticated waist for comfort and also just for sitting. I want something slightly loose fitting. So that's one thing. My, my number one rule when it comes to long haul outfits is never ever tight fitting bottoms. They're just not an option. No jeans. I mean, anyone that can wear jeans on a 10 hour plus flight, like, wow, without feeling uncomfortable, wow. <laughs> like you get, you get my praise because how you can do that, I don't know. I don't wear leggings either. I personally feel like the uh, feminine area needs to breathe. And so therefore I just don't wear tight fitting clothes on the bottom half. I want something with a looser fit. And same goes for on top. Now, with regards to a hoodie, you could always do a zip up hoodie if you wanted something that maybe if you did get a bit warmer, but you didn't necessarily want to take the whole thing off, but you've still got a hood. So that is also another option, because if you can unzip it, you can still get a bit of ventilation in there without necessarily taking the whole thing off. With my over the head hoodies, obviously I have to take the whole thing off. Now, I know there's some people that might also feel like a tracksuit is almost a bit too casual. That said, I feel like that sort of stigma around a tracksuit or leisure wear being worn as normal wear 
kind of faded a little bit thanks to the pandemic. I feel like we all sort of got used to wearing comfier clothing and I think a lot of us can embrace tracksuits and stuff like this. But you could go for something that's slightly different, like more of a stylized tracksuit. So here, this one has got um, this little seam detail that runs down the front and it's got wide legs, so they feel less like a traditional tracksuit bottom, but still with the comfort of that fleecy lining and with the elasticated waist. And then the matching top, I suppose similar to what I was just talking about with regards to a zip up hoodie. It's more of a zip up bomber jacket. So it's still, again, that sweat fabric, sweat material, you know, with the fleecy lining, it's got the zip, it's just got no hood. So there are lots of different options out there that you can kind of style up to make feel less like a tracksuit. And then if you wanted to be a little bit more luxurious, you could always go for something in a cashmere or a cashmere blend. So here I've got a little set from Almada label. This is literally just my loungewear that I wear at home, but it could definitely be worn as more of a sort of luxury travel outfit. Perhaps if you were traveling business or first and you wanted to feel, I don't know, a bit more posh, because it's a thing, isn't it? If you're traveling business or first, it's quite an experience. So I feel like sometimes you want to have an outfit to sort of match the experience. So these are some cashmere blend joggers and then a cashmere blend cardi with a little vest top on underneath. I'll do these in the cutaway so that you can see what they look like and I'll sort of put a little travel outfit together for each one. Um, but this again, super cozy, super comfortable, but just perhaps a little bit more elevated than your basic tracksuit. Not that there's anything wrong with a basic tracksuit, that's what I'm gonna be wearing when I have my next flight to Orlando. Now, one thing that I will just note and I'll just leave you to sort of ponder about is that we have all seen the reels and TikToks from flight attendants when they're telling us how absolutely disgusting airplanes are and their level of hygiene, so. If you've got an expensive cashmere set, just think about that. Just something to bear in mind. I've also just noticed on my rail that I've got some cashmere and wool jumpers as well. So you could kind of do a bit of a mix and match scenario. You could do like basic joggers and then a cashmere jumper on the top, or you could just mix and match your cashmere or you could mix and match your joggers. The options are endless. Right, so underneath said jogging suit, whatever it is that I'm wearing on the outside, underwear will always be 100% cotton. I just, I'm obviously a very firm believer in breathability. So always 100% cotton underwear. That's actually just a basic rule for me and my personal preference for all of my underwear, regardless of if I'm traveling or not. 100% cotton, always. And then on top, I am obviously very small busted, so I don't necessarily need support, um, which is why I don't wear underwired bras or bras with padding or anything like that. Um, so I kind of have two options here. The first option would be a sports bra. Now this one did actually come with padding in it, but I've removed it, it's like removable padding, because I just, I just don't like padding. I just want basically like a crop top, which is essentially what a sports bra is. Um, so that is one option that I would go for as my sort of underwear base. Another option is uh, something like this, which I know sort of looks like a sports bra, but this is more of like a crop top bralette. Um, and this is 100% cotton again, so it's breathable. This isn't sort of workout wear fabric. Um, and a lot of my bras, if you can call them that, basically look like this because, as I mentioned, I don't really need much support. Um, if you do have more of a fuller bust and you do need that support, then obviously wearing the appropriate undergarments will matter more to you. Uh, but I would say definitely to go for something with a wider strap because if you have something with a thinner strap, I mean, you will know if you have a larger bust. I think that's quite a common issue. It's obviously going to add to the discomfort. And then as the layer underneath, so over the top of a sports bra or crop top, but under the hoodie, I would just wear something like 
a basic cotton t-shirt. Again, cotton so it's breathable, not tight fitting. I would prefer something looser just in case there is a scenario where you're getting a bit too warm. I would need something that is breathable, a little bit baggy, but still comfortable and slouchy for traveling. I will then layer a coat over the top if needed. I have a couple on my rail. If I feel like I wanna kind of make a bit more of an effort for something to look like an outfit i'll probably go for one of my wool and cashmere blend coats but again sort of remembering where this is going to be stored when you're traveling my next flight is economy so they don't have the little wardrobe at the front like they do in business and first where they'll take your coat and hang it up for you so i'm either going to just have to bundle this up and pop it in the overhead bins because i'm in an extra legroom seat so i don't even have the hook in front of me to pop it on so just again i'm quite a forward forward thinker and a just in case packer so these things need to kind of just be thought out a little bit more when you are in a specific seat or in a specific section within the plane. And then here, I do have a big puffer coat, which I think if you were traveling to a colder destination, perhaps you were going skiing or like for us, when we travel to Canada or to New York or something in the winter, I would definitely wear a thick coat. A, because that's going to be beneficial when you land and if you have onward travel from the airport to wherever your destination is then it's going to be beneficial the same with perhaps a hat and gloves but second and I'm going to touch more on this in the next segment it's definitely going to help you with your packing by wearing the item that's perhaps the bulkiest and that also goes for footwear as well I always travel, or for the most part, travel in trainers. And I know that these days trainers all tend to be quite lightweight anyway, but if you did have perhaps a more bulkier, heavier pair of trainers, obviously they're still comfortable, I'd recommend wearing those so that you're saving any sort of bulk in your checked luggage and therefore you have more weight to use for other things. Then socks, whatever I'm wearing, they're usually some sort of sports sock because again, I'm wearing trainers. And bag-wise, I would normally take... So I usually fly with British Airways and if you're flying economy, so like the base level of your ticket, you would get one 23 kilogram checked luggage, which is your big suitcase. And you would get your just handbag, hand luggage, whatever that is, and also one carry-on. So that could be a smaller wheelie, like TSA approved bag as well. And I will take the luggage that I'm allowed. So I will always take the max amount because I just think, you might come back with souvenirs or I don't know, whatever it may be. You might end up going shopping and buying things. You might always, even if you don't fill though, all those suitcases or two suitcases, then at least you have the option in there to take them. And I don't travel so much that I kind of feel guilty about taking that amount of luggage because I don't feel like it's excessive. Um, so sort of personal bag wise, I will take a tote or something that's something that's not huge, but not super, super oversized. I do also have a tan leather Todd's bag, which is larger. I might potentially take that if for some reason I weren't going to take a wheelie luggage with me as well. So bag wise like personal bag wise normally some sort of tote if it's got internal compartments great but I'm gonna get on to packing in a minute and you'll kind of see how I organize my carry-on bag right moving on now to sort of things that I pack within my carry-on and hand luggage the first of which is a travel blanket this one is from a brand called ever snug Again, I'll link it down below, and it comes in this little zippy pouch. It's very plush and soft. It's just a plain black blanket inside, but this slots over your handle of your suitcase. So if you did have a wheelie suitcase that you were taking on board, you can just slot this on. You don't really have to worry about it. Then you can unzip the pouch and you can cozy up nice and warm underneath your own blanket. Now, obviously this is not an essential. It's not absolutely necessary. I think most airlines out there will provide blankets if you're cold. I think a lot of the time when you get on a flight, you'll often find them already on your plane seat but I just like to have my own. It's just one of those little items that smells of home. It smells of like our washing detergent and stuff. And it just, yeah, I don't know. It just makes me feel a little bit more homely. Next, I also take 
two other specific socks. Again, we've seen the reels, the TikToks of how dirty it is and why you should never take off your shoes on a plane. I'm gonna take off my shoes, I'm afraid. And so therefore, I take very specific plane socks. Uh, now these are obviously Disney themed, just because I had these to hand as I've got all my packing ready. These are a nice thick sock, so they're gonna keep my feet warm. They're fleecy lined inside. Obviously you can get these minus a Disney design, but also they've got that sort of slipper function. So if I go for a little wander about the plane, then not that planes are particularly slippy, but I almost feel like I've sort of got a pair of slippers on. I will not just wear these in the bathroom though, I will put my shoes back on if I'm going to go and use the bathroom. So a nice thick pair of plain socks is always what I will have in my hand luggage and also these are compression socks. I have been on long haul flights where I have both worn these and not worn them and I don't know if there's necessarily been a difference, but there's the fear in my mind of DVT. I, I always get up and have a little wander around every hour, unless I'm watching a film and then I'll watch the whole film, then get up and have a little wander. It's really important to keep moving, well not keep moving, but to get up frequently and go for a little walk so that you get your blood circulating properly because DVT is a thing. I would also take an eye mask that blocks out any light. Uh, mine is quite a thick padded one. I think I actually bought that at an airport, but paid an extortionate price for it. I would definitely recommend buying that kind of thing before you travel because they can be picked up so much more affordably. Also earplugs could be an option. Earplugs, aren't actually something that I ever take with me, but, and up until this point, I've never actually needed them, but I suppose you can never, you can never be too sure, can you? You can never guarantee what kind of flight you're gonna have. I'm now, my brain is like processing this, like you should probably get some earplugs, cause I'm very much a just in case kind of packer. So earplugs and then a neck pillow. I think a neck pillow is probably more important if you're flying economy because you don't have a bed and so therefore it just gives you a little bit more support and a little bit more comfort to sleep if you are indeed going to have a little sleep if perhaps you're flying overnight. Um, if I were flying in business, if I were lucky enough to fly in business then I would probably not take a neck pillow because it might not be so necessary. You've got the whole bed situation there. So it's probably not something I would take, but economy and premium economy, I definitely take a neck pillow with me. Also something other than in-flight entertainment, unless you're gonna rely solely on the in-flight entertainment, which is I think often quite plentiful. I think there's a really good range of stuff on there, but if all else fails, if you have a tablet or books, you could load stuff on your tablet, you could load books on your tablet, uh, TV series, podcasts, whatever it may be, but my word of advice would just be to be wary of your battery life. So make sure it's fully, fully, fully charged right up until the point that you're getting on board your flight. And just remember that a lot of flights, if they have a charging port, it's gonna be a trickle charge. Um, I'm sure there's probably some big fancy airlines that have a better charging system, but all the flights that I've been on over the years, they've literally just been a trickle charge and that's not really enough to keep a device running, playing films and whatnot. So just something also to bear in mind. Right now I've got a few sort of cosmetic-y type things that I keep in a little clear bag in my sort of hand luggage because um, I keep everything, I don't have a handbag organiser but I tend to keep things in separate things like this so that the bag is organised and not just an absolute jumble and I have to be rummaging around for my passport or something. So I would highly recommend like TSA approved clear zip cosmetics bags. You're gonna need a clear bag anyway and all they seem to give you at the airport is like a little sandwich bag and then you end up just throwing that away. So if you have something that's reusable, it's so ideal to just have all your liquids in there. You can just whip it out when you get to security and bob that in one of the plastic bins and it's just seamless, quick and easy. And I think that's kind of my rule of thumb for any kind of airport experiences. 
make them as seamless, quick and easy as possible. So I'd highly recommend these little see-through zip cosmetics bags. Within here, I've got a, a few little bits and pieces. So hand sanitizer and hand sanitizer wipes. I've got a gel in there and I've got some wipes. That might seem like overkill, but planes are a bit grubby. And so I like the wipes to be able to wipe down like my tray or my TV screen or whatever. And then the hand gel, I just like to use that obviously as a given. I'm not like over hand sanitizing, but I just like to have them there as that option. I also have a moisturizing lip balm in there and my moisturizer, which I will top up on my skin throughout the flight, because as I mentioned, my skin gets really dry. So I just need to moisturize. I also have hand cream in there, which again, I need to moisturize and eye drops because my eyes, I think planes just suck the moisture out of every part of me. So I like to have any sort of things that are gonna make moisture reappear back in, you know, eyes and skin. I also have in there a little travel mouthwash. I hate chewing gum, I really hate it. So I'm not a chewing gum person and I'm not really a fan of mints, like just eating or sucking on mints either. So I would just prefer to have mouthwash if maybe something I've eaten before I've got on board is a bit garlicky. Maybe the in-flight meal is a bit garlicky. I bet there's some weird fact that they're not actually allowed to use garlic just in case everyone has stinky breath. I don't know, if you're a flight attendant, let us know. But yes, it's just something to, to freshen because especially if it is a long flight, freshening up, when you can't just go to a bathroom or at like a proper, have a shower or something, just being able to freshen up in general is just nice. It's something that I enjoy being able to do just before I get off a flight. I've also got a little mini travel deodorant in there again for the same purpose, just a little freshen up. I have a little um, rollable perfume in there. You can just roll it on like pulse points, roll a bit, you know, behind your ears or on your neck. Again, just to have a nice smell, feel a bit fresh. Them fresh wipes, that won't surprise you. Again, fresh, I like to feel fresh. And then I don't think I've got anything else. Oh, I've got a hair clip and a hair bobble because, you know, sometimes you don't know if you're gonna need a clip or a bobble. And then this little chap, I call this a, a medication bullet it's like a little capsule and it's on a keyring i got these in a pack of two i have one on another clear bag that i'm going to pop in my hand luggage and then this one i'm just going to take as a spare i'm going to pop this in my check luggage but basically if i just pop this down it comes it's obviously very very small comes with a little screw cap oh, sorry and you can just pop your medication inside there so if you've got medication for the day or maybe like vitamins or something that you just, sorry, that's so squeaky, that you just wanna have to hand, um, then that's gonna be really useful. This is what I'm gonna use around the parks as well, just for having my sort of daily medication. Annoyingly, there's some that I have to take in the middle of the day. So I'm gonna pop it in there. It goes without saying, if you have like life changing medication or rather life depending medication medication you absolutely must take then obviously keep all of that in your hand luggage or your um, wheelie carry-on that you were going to take because if something happens even if it's just your luggage is delayed for 24 48 hours or worst case scenario if it's lost entirely at least you have got your medication there for the duration of your trip. And so you don't need to panic as much with regards to your medication, at least you've got it. So always, always put that. If it's super, super important, if you've just got vitamins and stuff that's like not super important, you can bob those in your checked luggage. Now also with regards to possibly losing a bag, I will often pack in my carry-on suitcase I will pack maybe one or two spare outfits in there, again, as a just in case if anything happened to my big check luggage. I've got some options in there. Always my toothbrush, definitely some spare underwear, which I'll always take some fresh underwear on board with me anyway, because fresh. 
And yes, a couple of outfits just popped in that little wheelie bag, just in case. Along with that, I've also got my travel adapter. This is just if you're like in the airport, and I think most airports now will have plug sockets and charging points that don't require a plug. So it could just be USB. I think some even have the C port now, so you can just plug that C port directly in there if you've got lightning cable. But on the off chance that maybe there wasn't one available and all you had to use was an actual plug socket, I carry my little plug adapter in my carry-on as well. And this is, this is a multi-world travel, multi-world? It's a world travel adapter. So that's basically suitable for any country. Um, so I will pop that in there as, again, a just in case. Another thing that I find quite useful to have in my hand luggage is my own earphones with the little, uh, is it called a Jack Aux? fitting these come in a little tin they're under a fiver so very affordable they come with that little fitting i just feel like it's potluck especially if you are flying economy on a flight you don't know what kind of earphones are going to be supplied some airlines even charge for earphones and i mean if you're on a 10 hour flight we're all very stimulated people these days. There's no way I could just sit without not watching something for 10 hours. I would just, I think I'd probably go crazy. So I always take my own earphones because the risk is that you get those like little padded ones from like the 80s and the 90s, which are just so uncomfortable and the sound is rubbish. These are noise cancelling. So they're the little kind that just sit in your ear. Um, and they block out any of the sound. So yes, take your own earphones, but they have to have that little aux jack fitting on the end. Right, here I have a, it looks like a brick, I know, a portable phone charger, and this is a beast. I am a fan of a hefty portable phone charger. This has got four full charges on it. And I would rather take one of these than take one of the little fuel rods. Now I know that many different airlines have different rules on big portable chargers like this. So I would check those out before you fly. Uh, Cause a lot of the time this, cause it is some sort of lithium battery, I believe. A lot of the time they'll have to go in your check luggage. And I know that you definitely probably wouldn't be able to use it on the flight. Um, but again, that will vary depending on the airline you're flying with. Um, but this, in general, just an essential for me when traveling. I obviously start to panic if I don't have that technology as my sort of lifeline. Um, and so, yes, that's an absolute essential. Water bottles, reusable water bottles. I've had a couple confiscated, even though they had nothing in them. So at security, because they're quite large and that's obviously over the 100 mil allowance, even if there wasn't liquid in there. Again, I think this rule is definitely changing from airport to airport. I'm not entirely sure on the general sort of rule. Again, something that you would need to check out. Um, but I would just, or what I do from, from now on, since I've had two confiscated, I pack a water bottle in my check luggage and then I just buy, once I'm through security, I've got that water bottle for like when I get to wherever I'm going and for general use. But then once I'm through security and I just have my hand luggage, I just go to Boots or WH Smith or wherever and I just buy the biggest water that I can so that I don't have to keep pestering flight attendants for like a little thimble of water. I've got that that I can go through. And if I finish that, then I can be like, can I have some more water please? So yes, I always buy my water after security. Along with my plain snacks. I love nibbling, grazing on the plane. I'm often watching movies. So for me, it almost feels like a cinema experience. And the whole plane ride, the whole journey is almost part of the holiday. I get really excited about it. So I like to have lots of plane snacks. So I will again buy those after security. But most importantly, if you have food intolerances or more importantly, food allergies, especially if they're life-threatening, 
then obviously you need to notify your airline of that. And also I would just maybe think about bringing some snacks from home. If you know that there's something that you like and something that's gonna sort of tide you over because plain food, it can be like, I love it. It's everything's in miniature. And I mean, who doesn't love miniature food, but it can be a little bit hit and miss depending on the airline. And then again, depending on where you are situated in the plane. And one last thing, just for anyone that does panic about passports, you can get little passport holders now with an air tag thingy on them. So you could always pop an air tag on that and that way if you were sat down eating and you got your passport out and you left it there you can check on your phone i'm sure other branded uh wi-fi tags or bluetooth tags whatever they actually are tracking tags are available for android users but i'm an apple user so an air tag for me is what i would use right moving on now to sort of just general packing tips for long haul packing cubes they can be useful, but then again, it depends on the kind of trip and the kind of packer that you are. I love a packing cube. It keeps things very organized. I bought packing cubes that specifically came with the brand or that come from the brand of the suitcase that I have. So they fit in very strategically, but I think it does depend on the sort of trip you're going on. And if you need special footwear and equipment and stuff in there, then it might not necessarily work for you. But yes, packing cubes, I love them. I got a laundry bag with my packing cube set. I would highly recommend always taking some kind of laundry bag, even if you've bought some plain snacks from after security and you've got a plastic bag, but keep that. You know, if you don't want to buy a specific like little laundry, zip up laundry bag, just something for you to put your dirty laundry in. And that can just sort of stay in there whilst you're on the duration of your trip. Now, I know I have just spoken about air tags. I have an air tag keyring, which is going to go inside my checked luggage. So if anything happens to my checked bag, I at least know where it is and I can see its movements. And that for me is a non-negotiable. I think air tags are 29 pounds, maybe 30 quid. Um, and I've got a little keyring thing for mine, which is gonna go inside my bag. And then I can always see where it is. Another thing regarding sort of suitcase secure, well, not necessarily security, is luggage tags. So get a decent luggage tag. I have often noticed that the luggage tags that they put on, whether it be one of the ones with the string, that elasticated string, or one of the loopy ones that sticks to itself, they can sometimes get damaged. So I have a proper sturdy luggage tag that I fit to one of my handles and I write down all the information on there. So it's just, I've got it twice, you know? so just trying to cover the bases. I mean, some suitcases do come with a little luggage slider that will come out where you can pop your information, but they're often very small. So I would just recommend looking into a good sturdy luggage tag. There are some that are made of metal. I would not recommend those. I've read through some of the reviews and a lot of them, because they're not flexible, they can snap. So I would recommend something in like a leather or faux leather, a PVC, something, something that has a bit of flex to it. Cause if it gets stuck in a luggage belt, at least it's flexible and it can just ping rather than snapping or being pulled off. Right, I have done a boots click and collect order for um, slightly heavier items and items which I know would have taken up bulk and weight in my check luggage. So because I'm going on a trip that's a little bit longer than, you know, your standard kind of weekly vacation, I need not necessarily massive size bottles, but full size bottles of shampoo, conditioner, that kind of thing. So I've made a little click and collect order just so that I can pick those up when I've gone through security. Um, that's another tip, always do it for after security because if you're trying to then take them through security, they'll just get taken off you. So opt for the after security option if you are doing a click and collect. And that's just gonna save me weight and bulk in my main suitcase that I can use for other things. 
I did something similar when Simon and I did our big six week honeymoon road trip. Obviously being away for six weeks, I needed big bottles of shampoo and conditioner and shower gel and that kind of stuff because we were away for a long time. So actually what I did that time was when we landed, we just went to a Target and we just bought all of our sort of toiletries and that kind of thing there. So just something to think about if you wanna try and save weight in your suitcase, unless you use a very specific product that can't just be bought from a Target or somewhere, then obviously, yeah, pack it. I've just forgot one going back to suitcases. I have one here, black suitcase. It's what I like. I just like to have black luggage. It's actually the most common color of luggage. So you can think about how many black suitcases are being loaded through the luggage areas and onto luggage belts. I would advise that you put something on your suitcase to make it distinguishable to you. It could be ribbon, it could be a bandana or a little scarf. Obviously not something expensive because it's gonna be going through all the luggage things. Maybe it's a very specific looking luggage tag. Maybe it's a sticker, which I know is not necessarily aesthetically pleasing, but something if you have black luggage to make your luggage stand out to you. Now, not only is this helpful for you being able to spot it, but I just think it makes the whole experience a bit easier, more seamless and quicker. I don't know about you, but when I land, even when I land in Orlando MCO, I wanna get my luggage and I wanna go. I want a quick look at the carpet, if you know, you know, and then I wanna go, I wanna get on the road and I wanna get to my destination. So I wanna be able to spot my luggage. I also want for someone to not take my luggage and think it's theirs and then some people don't even put them back when they've taken them off, they don't even put them back on the thing. Nightmare. So if you just have something on there that is very sort of colorful maybe, it just says, this is my suitcase, then that is always a good idea. Uh, so my next tip that I've got written in my notes was about coats and boots, which I think I've already spoken about, but yeah, just to wear your thickest, most bulkiest coat while you're traveling to save space and weight. And same goes for shoes, trainers and or boots, whatever footwear it may be. Bulkier is better, provided that they're comfortable, of course. Um, now, if you are a just-in-case packer like me, and you are maybe a little bit concerned about the weight of your suitcase, obviously before you go, if you have some sort of scales at home, you can weigh them and that's great, but maybe you've gone a little bit crazy with the shopping or the souvenirs or whatever it may be when you are at your destination and you're coming back. You can get these little self-weighing scales. You literally just hook them onto the handle of your suitcase, pick it up if you, can, if you can, if you can, it's a good sign. If you can't, not so much of a good sign. And it will give you a relatively rough reading of how heavy you're looking at. And then you can know whether you need to repack, whether you need to buy another suitcase and book another suitcase on the flight, or whether you need to channel a bing it and layer up with some of your clothes so that you can reduce that weight. It's just another little something that's obviously reusable for any trip and a bit of peace of mind if you are a bit of a worrier. Right, that is like the main bulk of my sort of packing tips. I'm just gonna go on to some additional tips. And these are just things that I've got written down because I know that they're things I've experienced in the past. The first one is to, before you board your flight, set some kind of reminder when you are on that flight, because you're obviously gonna go into flight mode on your phone or turn your phone off altogether. Um, but before you board that flight, to set a reminder to turn off roaming if you are not going to be using that service. Various different mobile providers will obviously have different pricing for going abroad. I looked at mine for O2 for going to the States and it's 199 a day and you don't even get that much data. And I was just like, oh, that's quite expensive. Now you can of course buy local SIM cards. You can even get virtual SIM cards now on your phone. But the plan is, and I've done this for the last two Disney trips that I've done, the plan is that I'm just gonna survive off the Wi-Fi, which means that I need to turn off my roaming 
before I land so that I don't get charged for being connected to um, whatever the local network is. So that's just one tip from me is set a reminder. Once you've kind of text whoever you need to to say I'm boarding is to then just make sure that you've turned your roaming off. Um, I think depending on your phone, there might be some settings online where you need to change a few things. You have to change a VN number or some, a VPN number maybe. Just research before you go. My next tip is with regards to just being a bit prepared in terms of packing appliances. So it could be travel kettle. I think probably the most popular amongst us here is going to be hair tools, hair dryers, curlers, straighteners, hot air brushes, etc, etc. I remember I had a trip to LA and I'd booked a photographer because it was a solo trip. I'd booked a photographer and I'd had a shower, I dried my hair, my hair dryer worked thankfully, and I went to plug in my hair curler, the only one that I'd brought with me, and it didn't work. So the voltage, for example, for UK to US, they're two different voltages. Not all standard travel adapters are voltage adapters. So you would need a voltage adapter to transfer the voltage or just check if your appliance is dual voltage. Because the worst thing would be if you got there and you couldn't dry your hair because maybe your hair, your hotel room doesn't have a hair dryer in it and you've, you're have you just left without. So then you'd need to buy something while you're over there and it's just, a waste of money and then you end up having to bring that home or donate it or whatever it's just a faff isn't it and then finally spending money abroad so previously i have used uh, when you go to sort of countries where they do charge i can spend off my bank card in europe uh, without getting charged obviously they charge the uh, specific whatever it is um rate of exchange but when it comes to traveling, for example, I know I'm being a little bit specific, even though I said I wasn't gonna be specific, but traveling to the US, I would get charged for spending in US dollars. So I have decided this time round that I am going to use a Monzo. So I'm all signed up. I've got my Monzo account and card, I've got them all on my watch and my phone, all ready to go. It is, um, it's come from recommendations because I know a lot of people use Monzo just as a normal bank account. Um, and it is something which you do have to sign up for a bank account, that is what it is. So there will be a hard credit search on your file, just something to be aware of. But they don't charge for using your card abroad, which, was the bonus for me. Now I'm not gonna use this as a regular bank account. This is gonna be like my travel funds um, because they don't charge for using card abroad, especially in the US. That's obviously very handy for me. They do, however, charge for cash withdrawals. So I would recommend withdrawing any cash that you need for your trip beforehand. Now the bonus of a Monzo, this isn't sponsored in any way, I've literally, I got this because my friend Debs, she said they used it on their last trip and it was great. So I was like, yep, sounds good to me. I'm gonna also get one. You sign up online, it's just an app. It can all be done on the app. My account from start to finish was open in about two minutes. It was really, really quick process. Um, and you can transfer money to it from existing bank accounts really quickly. That takes seconds. Again, all just done by various apps, like your Monzo app and then your NatWest app or your Barclays app or Lloyd's, whatever it may be. You can transfer money really quickly. And another thing which I personally am gonna find beneficial because I'm traveling with a friend. So if you were traveling with a friend or a friendship group, a larger party, perhaps mixed relatives, or even a partner where you're not married, or maybe you are married, but you just don't share the same bank account, you can transfer. So if someone picks up a bill somewhere, you can literally just transfer them the money in dollars or in pounds, whichever, and it's super quick and immediate. So the friend that I'm going with also has a Monzo account, which makes it absolutely seamless and that was just another sort of added bonus for me and why I chose to get a Monzo. I think that is all the tips I can possibly think of. If I do think of any more I will pop them down in the description box 
by the time this video goes live. But thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time.